Elocity, I am so excited to introduce to you today this new study that we are going to be going through as a church for the course of half of this year, a study on this book by Dane Ortland called Gentle and Lowly. This is a book that we have received from this publisher. It's a book I got last year, and it was one of the best books I read on the heart of Christ for sinners and sufferers. And I felt that it was a great book for us to read together. And Crossway, the publisher, has sent us 100 copies of this book and would love for you to journey with us during the course of this year to read this book together, to see the heart of Christ, to see his love for us, and then live our lives in light of his love for us as sinners and sufferers. If you have not received the book yet, please let us know. We've got a hundred copies that we would love to get into your hands. Um, and so uh, please don't go and buy it. If you want one, let us know. We will figure out a way to get it to you. But what I want to do today is just introduce this book to you and then basically um, just share some suggestions for how you can get the most out of this study together. This book, our goal is to know the heart of Christ, to know who Christ is, who he is, and who he really, really is. What does Christ say about himself? Dane Ortland, in his introduction, he writes these words. He says, the book is written for the discouraged, the frustrated, the weary, the disenchanted, the cynical, the empty, those running on fumes, those whose Christian lives feel like constantly running up a descending escalator. It's written, in other words, for normal Christians. In short, it is for sinners and sufferers. And it asks the question and answers the question, how does Jesus feel about them? What is Jesus' heart for sinners and those who suffer? And what we're going to discover is we're simply going to ask what the Bible says about the heart of Christ and consider, his glory, consider the glory of his heart for our ups and downs in life. Because the reality is all of us have highs and all of us have lows. And this book helps us see um, Christ's heart for us as we live our lives for him. So let me give you just a couple suggestions, a couple thoughts of how you can get the most out of this book. First of all, memorize the verse that this book is written around. It's Matthew 11, 28 to 30, and it's a simple verse. Some of you know this verse, but if you don't, memorize it. It basically says, come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am lowly and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And then verse 30, it says, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And so I would love for you to read the book, but through that passage, as you memorize it, as you soak it in, hear the invitation of our Savior for us who are sitters and sufferers. Second, read the book slowly. We're going to take a chapter a week. Each week, a different person from our church community is going to do a devotion. Picture this more like a crock pot or a... Um, What's the word? Um, slow cooker. This is not instant pot. Don't quickly read through this and just get it done. This is not a big to do checklist. Um, read it slow. If you want to read it fast, read it fast, but then go back and read it slowly. As you see the devotionals that are posted on YouTube and our website and Instagram and Facebook, whatever you use, um, listen to the devotionals. Um, learn from it. At the end of each devotional, there are several discussion questions. I'd invite you to answer those question, discussion questions. Maybe even respond on the social media that you're using and encourage the other church members on what God is teaching you as you are going through the book. Use this as an opportunity to let God not only teach you, but to use you to teach others as well. So take advantage of the platforms. Learn and grow together. Um, and I think, third, you will get more if you're studying this book with someone. Some of our Bible studies are going to go through it. If your Bible study is going through this, great. Not all of them are, and that's okay. But if it's not, if you're not going through it, find someone that you could say, hey, can we read this book together? 
Can we do the discussion questions together? Can we learn together? Um, and then challenge yourself as you study and grow in that. So Law City, over the course of the next several months, I just pray that we will see the heart of Christ, his heart for us as sinners, his heart for us as sufferers, and that we would fall in love with our Savior and we will live our lives and do all that we do, not out of duty and obligation, but everything that we do, we will do because of his great love for us. So let me pray for us as we begin and, um, and enter into this journey of studying this book together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying for us. We thank you for your heart for us that you are gentle and lowly, that you are a God who loves, that will leave the 99 to go after the one. You are a God who does not reject or forsake, but God, that you love us to the core. And so God, even as we go through this series, I pray that your Holy Spirit will stir in us, that it will give us a love for Jesus, a excitement of who our Savior is, and that we would more deeply fall in love with Jesus. And so, God, I just pray that you would help us to grow and help us to love you more and to pursue you more. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.